So before the video starts, I'd like to have a disclaimer, making sure that you reset the checkpoint before you go into this dungeon and make sure your fire team is, is set to invite only so that nobody will join you when you're doing this solo. Also, this is not a step-by-step -step video. This is more of a tips and tricks on how to solo flawless the dungeon. So make sure you're at a decent light level and have an idea on what to do on each encounter. I'm going to go through this dungeon as a warlock, but you can use any class you want. I feel like Titan would be the hardest. Uh, as Hunter go invisible with Night Sucker. But without further ado, for this first encounter, I'm going to be using Trinity Ghoul so that I can add clear pretty easily. You can also use Wither Horde if you prefer that. When the two wizards spawn, you can hear them outside of the cave. By then, you should have enough engrams for the encounter to start. So after you fall down, there's gonna be a bunch of adds. You can either pop your super and skip everything, or you can go invisible as a hunter. But if you wanna be safe, you can kill them all if you'd like. There's a Vandal at the top right. He will not die. After you kill him, he will spawn again. So I'd prefer to just skip every single one of them since it just saves some time. So once you get to this puzzle encounter, when you flip the first lever, what I did was I used the new sword perk, Eager Edge, which only roll with these two swords. So basically, this perk alone will help you go through this dungeon. But if you just want to do it slow and steady, that's also fine. Just keep in mind, there's a bunch of booby traps in this, in this encounter alone inside of the other rooms. So if you don't want to use this strat, just keep in mind, there's a lot of booby traps. But without further ado, let's get into the next one. So in this encounter, after you're done with the lever switches and you get the Scorch Cannon, you can shoot the Fallen Socket three times instead of charging it up. It is faster this way, uh, though you have to keep in mind that you only have 10 ammo on your Scorch Cannon, so it, it it's not the best strat for all of the encounter, but if you prefer one over the other, feel free to use it. Just something to keep in mind. For the ogre encounter, in order to start the damage phase, you will need 25 total engrams. If you kill all enemies from each side, that's already enough engrams to start the encounter. Just keep in mind that you will die after the timer hits zero, so either deposit the engrams after every wave or be quick and refresh your buff by picking up more engrams. I used Lament and Well for DPS, which took me 3 phases to kill the ogre, but you can use whatever shot you feel like more suited for you. In the Sparrow Encounter, I recommend using the Always On Time Sparrow since it's bugged and is faster than any other Sparrow. You can use my pathing which I found very consistent, but feel free to use your own, whichever works best for you. For the Fallen Shield encounter, all you need to know is that every one of the cannons are already set to target the shield, so if you have yet to use them to jump around the area, you don't have to reposition it. Again, there's nothing special about this encounter other than be careful with your buff, make sure you deposit all the engram before you leave the area or it will kill you.
The boss encounter will be a long one, so try to be patient if you don't want to make any stupid mistakes. The strat I did for this is that I will only use the left and middle section of the room. Try to always clear ads in both of these areas. After all the ads are cleared, prioritize the shank in the middle before the marauder. Don't be scared to use your super since you're always going to get one every 10 engrams you've collected. You need a total of 60 engrams to start the damage phase. What I like to do is get 40 to 50 engrams, then deposit all of them in the middle using my well. That way I can collect another 10 to 20 engrams to get my super back for DPS. After you deposit the last few engrams, DPS should start. If you're using my strat, there's going to be enemies on the right side of the room, which is why you should do damage from the left side of the crystal, so that you don't get flinched from the enemies. You don't have to do DPS in the middle, so pick a spot you think is best for you. I use 1k with particle deconstruction and well, which took me 4 phases to kill the boss. I always make sure to have 8 1k ammo before DPS, except for the last phase, in which I managed to kill the boss with only 4 1k ammo and a few grenade launcher shots.